<laughs> so here we are, episode 20 of the Level Up podcast. Today we have on Cameron McKay. If you want to go ahead and give yourself a little intro, tell the people who we are. Yeah, so, I mean, if you've obviously not already followed me on Instagram or anything like that, I'm also being coached by Cuba, like Ryan and Dave, um, online coach myself, again, like Ryan and Dave. So we all kind of live that similar life, so we kind of bounce our information stuff off each other pretty good. But I've been in the online coaching game now for kind of, I think it's about three years. Um, and before that, I did a bit of one-to-one PT. Um, currently working on trying to work my way into the super heavyweights from a bodybuilding standpoint. But it's a, yeah, it's, it's a long old game, but I'm in now kind of like the long run. Um, in terms of competitive background, I've done a couple of shows in men's physique. Um, you'd be surprised to hear probably. But yeah, I've done a couple of men's physique shows, um, a junior bodybuilding show. And since then, I've just been trying to grow as much as possible. So my main focus is kind of like growing myself and then clients as well. From an online coaching standpoint, I've just I've put a lot of focus into my clients um, and making sure that from a business standpoint, I'm kind of trying to make myself look a lot different to what everyone else is doing these days because there's a lot of online coaches out there. And I feel like uh, from a saturation standpoint, it's high. But from a, from a differentiation standpoint, it's very minimal. So kind of want to be one of those ones that differentiates a little bit. So that's kind of like one of the main focuses in the minute as well. Brilliant, brilliant. And uh, for anyone who doesn't know, like Cam is, let's say we're 130 kilo. 131.1 as of this morning's checking. Like yeah. freak, freaky big. Uh, get on his Instagram and check him out. But um, yeah, so Cam is being coached by Cuba and you're living out in Dubai at the moment. Um, what's that like? Yeah, Dubai is nice, mate. It's, it's really nice. I think... Uh, I don't think we, because I'm here with my girlfriend, Hannah, I don't think we live the Dubai life, if I'm honest with you. Um, yeah. Simply because, one, it's, it's just not in us to do that. It's kind of like not. When we got here, we realised it wasn't our scene from like that standpoint. We don't we don't drink. We don't do like going out on the piss. We don't, we don't even like regularly go out for food, nothing like that. I think uh, we kind of live our, our life that we were living in Leeds at home, but we just kind of moved it to... Dubai so yeah it's nice it, it's hot at the minute it's like high 30s so uh, being deep in the off season in like 38 degree heat is, isn't fun um, but yeah it's nice but I think we uh, we miss the UK 100% and uh, it's, it's kind of weird to say that because you think when you're there you think nah I'd love to live in Dubai but when you realise kind of what you're missing out on at home I think uh, yeah we'll definitely be back soon yeah because I'm um, just after coming over from Ireland, I'm staying in Doncaster and training out of uh, Ultraflex. And our original plan was um, to go to Marbella now in in January for a year. But I think uh, I think we're going to, st- well, I'm thinking about coming here instead. Um, and when you say that to people like Roger instead of Marbella, they're kind of like, what the fuck? Um, honestly, I actually was talking to Dave yesterday, and I was like, exact thing as you said, I, I'm not living the Marbella life. Do you know, like I could go down to the port and there's people driving around in Bentleys drinking strawberry daiquiris and shit like this. I'm not the yeah. only one. You know, I'm sitting inside, like I'm not even, I don't even have a tan. Like, you know, I know I look kind of tan. You know what? We, we were saying that this morning. We were saying, I, I can't believe we've lived in Dubai for so long and I'm so fucking pale. Yeah. <laughs> like, how does that we're like, we need to get a tan. I can't come home and people are like, were you just living in Marbella for like yeah. three, four or five months and you're still pale? So, um, yeah. yeah, and it, it's, it's weird kind of having it there, especially like I'm just kind of transitioning to prep now and it's like, it's there. I'm not gonna not gonna like go out or anything like and come off prep, but it's like it's just like a waste having that shit there, do you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's mad as well when you think about I mean, from a routine standpoint, I try and be as efficient as possible anyway. Yeah. But like when you're in your habitat, surrounded by your people, surrounded by people who are doing the same thing as you like. Obviously, you go, you go to the team, you see Cuba, you see AJ, people like that in Rotherham, and they have also been sat for eight hours doing check-ins at a laptop and are now in the gym to get better from a bodybuilding standpoint. Like, yeah. that just, it, like, drives that routine into you. And I think out here, we don't have that. Like, we, we're, we like, the odd ones out who just stay in working all day because yeah. that's kind of, like, what, it's what, what we're, we do. Does everyone speak English over there, or is there a language barrier as well? Oh, no, everyone speaks Every, English. Yeah. See, over <laughs> here... My, my Spanish is zero. It's hola, gracias, and I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, they know I'm not Spanish as well. So they yeah. really don't like me, and it's just it's just another inconvenience. Like do you know what I mean? So 
I, I'm kind of getting the, the itch to go home, but obviously I, I can't go back to Ireland. So I think I'm going to go to the UK. What a shopping like there for food? Man, the, the chicken, I would say here, chicken is wank. I had to switch to turkey. The chicken is horrendous. It's like eating a rubber glove. We were buying chicken here and it, it was awful to start with. Every time I opened it, I thought it was gone off. Yeah, it smells like shit. Like literal ass. Yeah. yeah. And then as well, you bite into it. There's like one piece in every packet and it's just like you just chew and chew. It's like leather. Yeah. It's bad, isn't it? it's That's one of the biggest inconveniences out here because we can't get hold of things like Bagel. square bars mm -hmm. and just you're know, easy to eat food when you're like eating yeah. the office. So I'm eating like 450 grams of cooked rice like four times a day. <laughs> how, how am I doing this? I just sat there with a shovel and a rice cooker. <laughs> <laughs> It's ridiculous. And then as well in the heat, like you were saying as well, I'd say it's I'd say it's even worse. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's harder. Do you have plans when you come back? Will you be training out of Ultraflex again? Yeah, we'll we'll definitely just go straight back to that area. I think we were looking at a couple of different areas to live in the UK, just based on doing a couple of different areas. But everything came back down to the gym. Well, so I think Ultraflex. People, yeah. people people would look at that or listen to that and probably think that's just fucking stupid. But I think when you, when so much of your life revolves around this, like it does for us, it's a bit more like, well, that some days, or even for days in a row, that's the only time I'll leave the flat. It, because your work is just so heavy and the only time you leave is to go to the gym. So it's like, obviously you want that gym to be perfect. You want the environment perfect. You want the kit to be perfect. You want everything about it to be good. And I think the only gym that I've ever trained at that has that is, is Ultraflex Well Room. So yeah, 100%. Brilliant, brilliant. And how did you find? Because I know you were you you were training with Kuba for quite a while, and um, yeah. before you, before you went off, like you, how 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 much do you feel like that advanced you from like a coach and an athlete, kind of being in in there with someone like that, kind of, and they're watching you firsthand rather than just sending videos and stuff. I think from a from an athlete standpoint, it, I've always thought you know. I want to be the hardest worker in the room. I want to train hard, that kind of thing. But when you see, or when you not even just see, when you're training with Kuba and AJ and they're deep in prep, so everything to them is like completely regiment. I think I trained with them both from about, it's probably about 10 weeks out all the way through. And then Kuba went to, I think it was Romania at the time. He's probably going to, I don't know if that was right, but mm. he went square for a show. And I did the last couple of weeks of AJ's prep with him. And it was like the most intense training that I'd like ever done like they were deep in prep smashed and I was just as smashed as them and I was like off season like I should be flying kind of thing but yeah. the second were that ruthless that they were just yeah they were they were they were good though the amount I learned about how to actually be intense and how to actually take sets to where they're supposed to go and again it's just having that those people around you it's like I bet you two when you train on your own versus when you train together it's yeah. a complete ball game and it's, it's not even like you can replicate that on your own because you simply can't replicate it. And people will say, oh, yeah, they can't train on my own, no matter. But if you had someone there, especially with the other presence of your actual own coach, I think it just takes you to that next level. Yeah, 100%. And I do think that you, you, like, to stand out from the crowd, you can't just stay in the same place, doing the same thing over and over again. You do need to kind of reach out and put yourself in a situation where you're the small fish in a big pond, and whether that be from a business point of view or an athlete point of view, it's the only way you're going to kind of learn and grow, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and in terms of competing then, when are you looking to compete? Um, well, I was speaking to Cuba sort of last two weeks. Uh, maybe it will be next year. If I can get another good push as efficient as this one's been, I'll probably be able to go next year. If things were to slow down potentially because um, I would personally was thinking like 2023 so I was thinking take all of next year as well but Cuba seems to think the way things are going if we can have a nice efficient push again which I don't see why I couldn't like I'll, I'll just do everything the same or just simply work harder so it'll, it will be as good and yeah I think next year mid next year, mid next year probably for me yeah and uh, obviously have that pro card in mind um, and yeah. First thing in mind for me is to be a competitive speaker. I think, I w obviously, the, the thought of going pro is like amazing to me. And, and that would be, that is the end goal. But I think I'm, 
definitely a lot about like the quantifiable goals and having them there to like right take that one next one right take that one next one and for me the first one just to, to be a competitive super because they're, those boys are big yeah. like they are huge I think a lot of people you know when you see people in person it's it's obviously night and day but I think we we all know that but I think you know people say listening to this now not as well versed in the old bodybuilding scene if they were to see like you in person compared to Instagram they'd be like oh and then it would kind of click it's like that's that's what that's like and then yeah. you compare to a, a, a like top level amateur super heavyweight is th that's the next level again so then it's like oh okay and then if they yeah. ever see an actual pro they're like fuck like you know it's it's a real eye opener it's not like instagram is it's not like a good place when to you're posting them a prep or not a prep or like an off season update on uh, on instagram and people are like yeah you look sick you've got this you are you thinking, like, bro? Wait, yeah, thank person. you. Yeah, thank you, but you ain't got a fucking clue. Like, yeah. I'm levels below where I need to be. But there's yeah. people blowing smoke, blowing smoke. And it's like until Cuba tells me you fucking got this. Like, let's go. Mm. I'm, I'm no. Yeah, one there's there. me and Dave are the same. There's like three or four people I look to and be like, is that a thumbs up or a thumbs down? And if it's a thumbs down, I'm like, right, we go like crack on. And if it's yeah. a thumbs up, I'm like, fuck yes. Like, it's it's yeah. you no know, a good good feeling. Like getting the thumbs that's up is a big one. Yeah, that's not even from like people would say that sounds almost like snotty to be turning your nose up to other people's compliments. It's, it's not, no, but no. it's like you, you've got to look for the right validation if you want to be very good in this sport. I think. Mm. Yeah, and constantly yeah. taking on all those like yes, is that like you're you're gonna be like all right, well I completed that. <laughs> yeah, I'm done now. No, don't need to get better. Apparently, I'm exactly, the best. Yeah, if it was up to Instagram, we'd all be like, don't. Yeah. Post we'd all be. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But it's actually hard to find those people who will turn around and say, "No, you actually look like a sack of shit." <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Some and, people don't have the bottle to say it. Yeah, yeah, and then a lot of people, like without being disrespectful or whatever, a lot of people don't really know what to look for as well. And um, yeah, that's a big one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And from a business point of view, then, like you are always, always advanced on this. Like from what I see on Instagram, there's always like new stuff coming out. Um, like where where does this come from? Where where do you get this? I think for me, that like you were saying, there's only a certain amount of people you you go for like the thumbs up, thumbs down validation thing from a, a physique standpoint. I have like that similar tier of people that I watch from a business standpoint, and because I think it would be so easy to follow a thousand online coaches on Instagram and yeah. be like, right, I'm doing that little bit more than all of them are doing. So I'm, I'm sound. I will just stay here slightly above the majority. But I like to, I would prefer to be slightly below the elite. Yes. Like the elitist yeah. of the elite. So you're looking at people like, I look at like Cuba, AJ, uh, Jace, people like that. Th those kind of elite tier online coaching, like Callum, Muscle Mentors, those kind of people, whatever they're doing is, is top of the game. And, and you know that from just like a reputation standpoint. So I think if, if, if you're not, if you're looking at people below you and thinking, as long as I'm doing a little bit more than them, not people above yeah. you, I'm thinking, as long as I'm, you know, not just slightly behind them. That's that's what I would rather be. I would rather be, like you say, the little fish. I'd rather be the little fish in, in their conversation at their round table than I would the king of the table, at a table of people who don't really know what, what to look for within the online coaching room. Yeah. So it's actually funny you described it like that because when I was, I was, I can't remember, I was having a conversation about you with someone recently, and that's literally what I said is like you are as close to being on that level as you can go without actually being there. Yes, do you get me? Like, I don't know anyone else who's as close as you as like breaking into that level. Mm -hmm. um, and it, yeah, it's just that, like, and that's exactly how you explained it there. Yeah. Um, and do you think it's just like a matter of time before you do break into that level? I think. A lot of these guys at that top level, they've they've earned that top level. Mm -hmm. Like they, they've they've spent time eating shit. They've spent time doing other people's work for them. They've spent time in in the client base of the majority, that kind of thing. And they've like sort of created that validation for themselves. They've built the reputation. So I think as long as I keep chipping away doing what I'm doing, that validation by like law of averages almost it will come at a specific work ethic and a specific amount of time. And so I hope so. Obviously, I hope so. But uh, I don't, I'm, more, I'm more so just sort of 
head down, keep working. If I focus on me and my coaching and my business for long enough, the validation I assume would almost come without you even noticing. Like I guarantee if you asked someone like Cuba or Callum or someone at that top level, when did you reach that top level? They, they probably wouldn't be able to tell you because hmm. they were so fucking in the business. They were so head first in it that they, they didn't happen. It just happened around them. Yeah. Do you think there's that, ever like a like a lucky break for coaches in, in, in terms of like competitive bodybuilding coaches? Like some that springs to mind would be Matt Jensen, who, like Dallas, like really put him on the map, and then from there it, it just seemed to be exponential. Do you seem like do you think that'll be a thing, or do you think that's like a once off with some coaches, or is it just consistent, long term, just inch and inch and forward? You know? Yeah, I think I think it is more so the inch and forward, long term, because. Obviously, Matt's a good coach. And I, I did work with Matt for a bit. Yeah, yeah, actually. Yeah. Throughout the last year. It, it completely wasn't for me. Like, it just wasn't my scene from a, how I would like to be coached, the way I like to do things. Um, but obviously, as you, as you know, as a coach who is always trying to break that barrier and always trying to learn a little bit more and get a little bit better, trying something new sometimes, it, it's never, it doesn't hurt to yeah. try something new. Even if the outcome is you realise shit, that wasn't for me. Like, that was what happened with me, but now I know it wasn't for me. But that was sidetracked anyway. Uh, yeah, I would say it's probably more so inching forward because I think sometimes good coaches and even great coaches don't get the chance to show that they're great until they have enough of an adherent and consistent athlete to show it. Okay. Like, obviously, no, that makes sense, yeah. Because I remember best, this. Go on. I think the best results come from consistent and adherent clients. But when you get a consistent, adherent, freak working in the gym, genetically blessed client, and you're an outstanding coach, you're going to get great results. So yeah. I think sometimes it's on a lower level, that athlete knew that coach was great. So they went to them. Was like, right, let's do it like he could, he yeah, could see something a lot of people. Let's prove it kind of thing. Like I imagine that's the kind of thing that happened with Dallas and Matt. He was like, well, I've yeah, 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 yeah. Right. So let's prove it. And that's where the, the fruition came from. Yeah, so yeah I think it's what important. Kind of like, go on. No, go on, go on. I said, I kind, of, I kind of feel like this, obviously, on a much, much, like, kind of smaller scale. I just kind of coached on the side for ages and ages, like, probably, like, two, nah, probably, like, a year and a half, two years, I coached on the side, uh, just, like, next to college. And then Dave trusted me. Like, Dave had just started, like, you know, being enhanced. And he trusted me. And then we just blew him up. And then it was like, oh, okay, this fella knows what he's on about. So that was, like, my... Small big break, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, I've had like another a few like natty fellas that were like, yeah, yeah, let's just do it, and it, it really kind of paid off. Do you know, it was like I got a chance to show what I'm about. Um, yeah, definitely. And I think there's there's two ways you look at that. You when you look at it like we're looking at it, like people trusted you to coach them, or oh, you got lucky that those people asked you. Yeah, you, you got lucky that an enhanced guy who works hard in the gym asked you to coach. Them. It's like that's how some people would see it. Or yeah, from like, like you've heard luck, yeah. Yeah, 100%. I would see it more so down the line of those people saw it. Mm. This is yeah, this guy knows what he's talking about. Let's go. Boom, that kind of thing. And did you ever have many, like, major changes in your coaching along along the way? So just for example, I know you have a, you have a business mentor at the moment, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, like, so myself and Ryan, when we first started this, we hired a business mentor as well, but it was much more sales and like everything automated like not having an actual like connection with your client um and we like we went up our first like two three months starting i think we had like 120 clients between us or something like that and like literally scrapped all that i think i went back to like 10 clients i think ryan was something similar and built it back up the way we wanted to and the way like say more like a Cuba or a Callum or something like that and yeah. like an actual good quality service rather than just the sales game. Have you ever had anything like that along the way or is it, have you always just been like this? I think, yeah, I've always been like, I didn't hire my mentor until I was quite deep into coaching. So mine was sort of like, from that point then when I hired my mentor, it was more like systematically mm. to go from good to great that kind of that's what I was looking for at the time, um, but from the from the ground up, I just built it like I was saying before, like watching the people around me who were good and how they coached. 
kind of thing. And that, I mean, the, the main one that stands out to me was AJ. I used to like religiously, like you can even ask AJ, I used to be in his DMs 24 seven. The guy probably thinks I was, so, or thought I was so annoying back mm -hmm. then. I was just rinsing him with coaching questions. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and it, it obviously it helped and it worked. And I think the, I almost didn't even know I was doing it because they, these were the guys I looked up to. I didn't see it like I see it now. Like I didn't see it like trying to look, be as good as those people. I just saw it as, oh, I look up to them. So I asked them kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I, I never really went down the automation side of things. With we weren't around about it all, honestly. Like without naming names, I'm, I, I guess you can guess who it is, maybe. But uh, yeah. we, we said it as well. We we're like, look, we're not about it. I'd like to actually coach people, not just sell once off diet plans and mask it as coaching, you know? Uh, and it was just all sales. And then like, you know, the whole leaky bucket, like you, you gain a client, you lose a client. Like you're, you're just burning through potential yeah. clients, you know? Yeah. You, you're rinsing your list almost, aren't you? Yeah. That's yeah. Quicker than anyone else would. Yeah. yeah. And what, if, if you don't mind talking about it now, what kind of stuff like very briefly would, you go into with the business mentorship because we obviously only have one experience and it's been that side like and I've just I've, I've never heard of anyone kind of having someone like you and um, like what kind of stuff does he help you out with or like you have a, like a check-in with him yeah so we'll just do a weekly call like this but honestly it's not even business mentoring it's like life mentoring it's like I've gone to him with life issues before I've gone to him with like big life decisions um, so stuff like that all comes into it but from a business point of view he, he delves into like how to talk to clients so in the initial stages the, mm. the better ways to word things and talk to clients so a lot of the time you know what you want to say and you know what you can do but you ain't got a clue how to put it across to someone who hasn't got like who doesn't know what we know so you can't be going in using big bodybuilding words and you know, shit like that when you're talking to someone who just wants to get in shape or it's maybe wants to be there eventually but it's just at the start of the journey mm. so I think going into that was big for me learning how to actually talk to a client understanding clients um, like who who is your client was a big one to begin with and actually your target market that kind of thing I know that's something that you do that's something that a lot of automated business mentors do but I think I, I think it's hard to define a, uh, an ideal client and then automate everything yeah. Like, that doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me that because it's not it's just whoever wants the fucking sale mm. so I think it's a lot more about specifically talking to working with them and then a lot of systematic work because as you know when when you start building a decent client base it, there's a lot of work that goes into it keeping hold of all the data you need to keep hold of you know having your lists, having your system sorted, your payments sorted, all that kind of stuff. And he just makes sure that you've got all that nailed. And almost is like, you, you have to have that nailed before you can even grow. You go to, you grow too quick for that, it's like self-sabotage. So he goes into all that. And then it's just more so, for me at the minute, it is more so about the next level, how to how to grow again kind of thing. So we're looking what is, at- What is the next level for you? Is it like a number of clients? Is it, what is it? I think for me now, the next level is, like you were saying, breaking into that that next level of client. And whether that comes with an even more refined service, a level up again of results. So I'm, I'm looking into now, like, right, I want to work with guys who are, like, serious, serious. Mm. And the, the, the more serious guy will, will get the, the next level of result. It's like if you look at the people in that circle, Cuba, Callum, the results they get, you almost look at them and you think, fuck off. Like, yeah, that's not, yeah. that can't happen. And that, that's what, where I want to be now on that pedestal, I think. I think a, a number of clients, shooting for a number of clients is something that everyone does until you get there. And like, it kind of like a little puff of smoke goes off in your head and you think, this isn't actually as good as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, like 120 just kind of bog standard clients. Like, you, know. you get there, don't you? And you think, ah, yeah. I don't know if I actually... Yeah. Like, but that's when we had loads of clients versus now, not 
like we have fuck all or like five clients or something. Like we have a fairly good roster, and I like the guys that are on the team because it's like hey, that's yeah, a strong yeah. team. They're like the like these are my boys, you know. That's a good yeah. feeling as well. So I can only imagine what like Kuba and like JP felt like when he exactly. used to coach more. Do you know, it's like the, this yeah. is my team. Do you know, I'd say it's a it's a good one. I'd say it's a good feeling. That's that's kind of like the next level for me. And then oh, I'm looking with him now as well, especially outside the fitness space how to grow from a business point of view outside the fitness space. So there's loads of different sort of avenues that we're looking at. Um, but yeah, That's I, guess. I want to do at some stage, Elliot. Yeah. I, Honestly, I've followed him for a while and he seems like, like the, the real deal, if you get me, you know? It's not just like, like uh, bullshit. He wanted to start coaching and actually coaching people. He wanted to start mentoring and actually mentor people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the guys on Zoom calls with me and stuff, but it's just you and him. There isn't, like, I see people on oh, business mentor call on their Instagram. And there's fucking 30 people. 40 people. Yeah, and I'm thinking, you, you can't even hear what's being said, let alone <laughs> taking it in. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's a, it's a lot more one-to-one, and that's it. But sometimes on a call, there may be nothing that even needs doing, but just having a conversation with someone who is up there at that elite level of business, not even in the fitness space, just his life, it just, it just fires you up. Yeah. Well, the call when you think about it, what what can I do now? Like, what can I'm ready to go. I'm going kind of thing, yeah. and even that just spark every week is, is big for me. Mm-hmm. I should never realize. I remember he shared a story that I think it was like last week. He was in a, an old JP video, you know, the ones that were in black and white. It was like yeah, he, James he old, and yeah. Elliot. I was like, what the fuck? Like I've seen that video <laughs> so many times because that's the one where JP is pressing and he doesn't get any. Fucking roars the place. Yeah. Elliot just in the back. It was when they were in uh, Strength Asylum. Is it Strength Asylum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, he came from being like a JP boy and he was just like, right, I'm going to bang on a suit here and make mills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, fuck so. <laughs> <laughs> Did work with Jordan in the earlier stages of that kind of thing. He's always been into the, the business space, Elliot has. Um, so yeah, I think that's what he did. I'm sure he was coached by Jordan as well mm-hmm. for a decent amount of time. And I remember as well, I'd followed him for ages and obviously in lockdown, I, I assume he was training less. And then one day he just put up a front double and I was like, oh, this fella actually trains. That was oh, this, obviously before I knew he used to train with Jordan. And I was like, oh shit. He's like, he actually trains. All these yeah. business mentors nowadays just looks like fucking twigs. It's like, Bob, what do you know about bodybuilding or coaching? He's, he's strong, mate. I went and trained with him and I was thinking, I was feeling strong. And I think I, that dumbbell pressing like the 60s at the time, I did a working set. I was like, yeah, he had this videographer there and everything. And he just picked up like the 75s. Started like repping. I was thinking, how are you fucking that clever at business? And like, <laughs> strong at me as well. It's fucking oh. stupid. Is he big? Is Obviously, he's not as big as you in person, but like... He, oh, yeah. Good oh, shape to him. Very, very nice shape. Yeah. But, but like classic physique kind of shape. Yeah, yeah. Pull, like pull a vacuum, you know. Yeah. Um, did you get that like 10K plaque yet? You got that. He dishes those out. Those are good for marketing. Oh, the like the money things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they are cool, they are. It's When I started with him, I was... Past some packs, if you get me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. Like, yeah, no, I wasn't asking numbers. I was just saying that. Like, yeah. yeah. My next pack is like, I'm, I'm, I'm chasing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was, I wasn't asking numbers. Um, but like, that's good marketing. Like, he's yeah, like, it's good. Dan, that's yeah. something I picked up on. I was like, that's obviously it's good for the mentees. But then I was like, if you're just dishing out these packs and people are like, geez, he's he's getting these people to earn X amount a month. So it's like two, five, ten, whatever. It's like they're like, I'm, I need in. I need it, yeah. yeah. But it's mad because you think about it like that, but other people who maybe don't think about it from a marketing, they just see it and think, I need it. Yeah, they're like, geez, that's that's just him being nice. It's like they don't even even pick up on it. And he's just sat there thinking, yep. Yeah, he's like, that's funny. (laughs) How much those uh, plaques cost? Like fucking 20 pound or something? Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. it's like getting the little football trophies of Sunday League, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) It's a classic thing. And it's like, say, it brought him in. Yeah, killing it. And Cam, would you ever consider doing anything like that yourself, like business mentorship? Because, like, I reckon you could. Um, do you know what? I've I've always wanted, and like, what I do is with my clients who are coaches, I will try and help them as much as possible. Mm. Um, and like, I'll really go into things and try and help as much as possible. But I just don't feel like I don't know if it's because I've only ever had Elliot as my mentor, but I am not on that level. Yeah. Like mentally, like what you see people doing with all this, the automated 
shit and the 30 people on a call and you don't even get a call but you get access to this portal with 15 videos and yeah. and I would never want to do that I would want it to be the way Elliot does it mm. and I don't one I don't think I've got enough time personally and two I just don't think I'm on that level like when you talk to him and the headspace that he's in the mentality that he's got it's different it's like I'm being sold <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll have off this podcast now and be writing names straight away. I'll be like, hey, remember that referral thing? (laughs) (laughs) And Cam, so one thing I wanted to kind of pick your brain about is grow actually growing your Instagram. So I remember when I first started following you, you were on like 11, 12,000 followers. You're up 20, was it 20, 21 now? Uh, Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And then like I, I've noticed, like you have a lot of international clients. Like, was that something that you thought worked specifically towards, or was it just like natural growth? Yeah, na- completely natural. I'll be honest. I did nothing specifically to grow that. All I did was work on. It's what I think almost trying to working on trying to grow my coaching business. Then the Instagram just followed because it's like that is your audience. So as your coaching business grows and more people follow you because of the results you get, they follow you because of the information you put out, they follow you because of like the, the content essentially, they then become potential clients obviously to us because they're following them and then the, the opportunity to, for coaching is massive when they're following you versus if they're not. Mm. So for me, it was more about grow the coaching business and that followed. But I wouldn't care if that was like 5,000 but I still had the coaching business I had today. It just, or I guess all it does is widens the scope for people to, for people that I can help from a coaching standpoint. Like it's like good quality followers, you, you know, you're getting, it's not just like you're banging up a fucking picture of you in a bikini on the beach, showing your arse yeah. and getting those followers. Like, yeah, exactly. You get I think, a lot of likes in that big. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, it would drop to 5,000 if I posted that. <laughs> <laughs> Unfollow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, no, that, like, it's just, uh, I've always really interested in it because, like, that's something, like, you, you are kind of what I've been looking at as, like, uh, where we need to go. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. you want to be on, like, the level of, like, the Kubas and the Callums and stuff like that, but it's, there's levels, there's levels to the game, isn't there? Yeah, I, I do think that was one thing that, Elliot focused on with me as well from a business thing was like I maybe did used to post a little bit more like top off post workout absolutely no relevant content in the caption mm. and it's like is, is that ever going to get you a client is that ever going to be valuable mm. like obviously to, to just document your progress once in a while I'd say yeah maybe it's a good idea but not like nine times in a row yeah do you know what I mean so I think when I started switching to more specific content on like what do people who want to be coached by me need to know and what can help them that's when things started getting better not only from like a following point of view but from like a coaching point of view more inquiries coming through and stuff like that that's when when I switched the content was when the level of focus from people wanting to be coached switched as well and do you line up your content or do you just take pictures and bang them up? Yeah, I'm, I'm one of the guys who just does it on the day. Yeah. I think I've, I've tried doing it before where you lay it out day by day, week mm-hmm. by week. I just I forget. Yeah. Or like I'll, take I'll take something on that day and I think, well, that's better. Mm. This makes more sense. Because I normally, when I'm doing content, I normally think like, right, what questions have I been asked this week? By, by a client mainly, or if someone's asked me one on Instagram, and they've asked me something which, because if, cli- if one client's asking me something, there's a good chance that like 50% of clients are thinking it or have thought it in the past. And that means there's a good chance that a lot of people who aren't being coached by me haven't got a clue. Mm. So that is a, there's a piece of content, just to answer the question. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how I, how I do it. Very good. Um, I, Ryan, do you have anything else you want to, Go over there. I have some questions here. No, I'm pretty happy with that. That was a nice, nice chunk of info. Nice. Uh, Q&A. Q&A. I mean, the Insta Q&A. Uh, yeah, I have um, a few. Here's a good one. What like, what would you look for in a coach? Because obviously you've been you've been with a few people now in the last while and you've seemed to have settled with Cuba. Um, 
anything in, in particular that you were looking for? Or... I think before I got with Cuba, it was, I didn't know what I needed. So the level of detail that Cuba goes into with like training, the way you move, your recovery, digestion, stuff like that, I'd never had that before. And only when I started being sort of like watched on that level was I like, shit, this makes a difference. Mm. I feel like there's so many coaches who coach clients online and I bet they don't have a fucking clue how they move in the gym or how hard they work or because they just don't see it. Mm. So sending like form videos over to people, so that was massive. And when I moved away from Cuba, what I then got was minimal detail. Mm. And it was like, wow, how different a level they are on is amazing. So that's, that's what prompted me to go back. It's kind of like, I suppose for me, like if I was to answer that question, it would be like what I'd look for in a coach is what I aspire to be myself as a coach. 100%, yeah. Yeah, and I think like like that, you obviously, you you want to high, like hold yourself to a high standard and stuff. So why would you settle for a coach who's giving you less than that? Um, another one there. Do you feel like prep, like prepping for shows has gets easier or harder as you want? And I suppose the off season side of things as well. Um, I'd say that the, the preps don't get easier, obviously, but I think you 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 know what's coming a little bit more. Like your first prep when you're in the trenches and you feel like you're dying, you, you think you're dying. Like it's as simple as that. <laughs> Whereas when you're two or three preps in, you kind of know what to expect. So I wouldn't say the get easier I just say you get more like you're, you're a more seasoned competitor so you know a little bit more about what things are going to do I also think preps can be very different like one prep you could be dieting and your calories don't need to go as low as you imagined and another prep they might need to be rock bottom low because your body's just reacting a little bit differently so yeah I, I think I also think that off season is harder than prep yeah hands down really? every if anyone tells me they think prep is harder than the off-season, you have not fucking off-seasoned properly at all. Yeah. Like, what I'd give to be deep in prep versus eating this kind of food now, this weight is ridiculous. Where's your food on so, it right now? Do you, have you done the macros on it or...? I haven't even done it, mate. I'm no. doing... No, I'm doing seven meals each day, then intro included on a training day, rest day before legs, off-plan meal on top of my meals, rest day, any other rest day would be sushi on top of meals. So it's a lot of food. What do you go Just, for your, for your off-plan meal? Not the sushi one? Nah, we're, we're, on a, right now. we're on five guys at the minute. And to be honest, it's, sit, it's sitting quite nice. That's why we're, that's why we're on to that. Um, but sushi, sushi in Dubai is good. Like, it is yeah. really, yeah. They make it proper nice out there. I've not found any good sushi back here. There's a good sushi place back home and it, the bar is fairly high. So sushi out here is fucking wank, man. Honestly. It's bad when you've had that level, isn't it? And then yeah, you try I can't it. go back. Like, I wish I came in at, you know, fucking rock bottom, but it's just... Like, as, as the level sushi, and then you go, oh, yeah. And it's best. literally like that. Drink with the fucking rice is hard, and you're like, is yeah. this even fish? Yeah. <laughs> is this even... <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what it is like, but, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, another question there. Uh, how like do you? Is it the question is has bodybuilding had much of an impact on your personal relationships and like do you feel like like are you happy with that? Yeah, I think yeah, one hundred percent it has. I think body bodybuilding is so selfish that you. It's almost like you you couldn't be. Well, I don't think I could be a bodybuilder and, and take it seriously. Kind of take it in just a normal group of friends like you're having like college and things like that I, I just don't think I would fit mm. at all and I, I never did really because I before bodybuilding I played sport at a high level anyway so it was nothing new to me when I started bodybuilding and it was selfish because I almost didn't have loads of personal relationships beforehand because wow. I was basketball before bodybuilding that's when I was tiny like 100% yeah. <laughs> I was small then yeah no, I, I, I never knew you we were into that. That's, that's yeah. What are you, six one as well, yeah? Six four. Six, six four flat. Six, six four, four five four. eleven. 
Yeah. <laughs> I used to say I was six foot one when I when I played basketball, but I think I've put, I think being this heavy shrunk me. It's like yeah, yeah. I've it's lost any point. <laughs> Would you rather be a couple inches shorter just to make it that bit easier to fill out the frame? Or are you taking the hit with six foot and just kind of? I think it would. See, sometimes I look at it and I think if I was five foot eight now at this weight, I would look fucking stacked. You look huge, like ginormous, literally. But I, but I think being this way, and if I reach like 140, 145, I would look that stack, but then three inches taller. That's going to look good. Yeah, that's more impressive, yeah. Yeah. Where do you think the height kind of drops off in terms of like how beneficial it is? Like Dave's 6'2", and I'm like a hair above him. And wow. Like awesome. Dave's open, but I'm classic, so I'm like, I don't have to be as big. Yeah. Like Dave has to be fairly fucking big, so... Yeah, you have to be lying there, yeah. you know. Yeah, I mean, at least it's, 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 it's weird how there's not height in bodybuilding in it because you could have a super who's 5'8 and just fucking dense yeah. as anything, yeah. and then like a, a Jamie the Giant super who is that tall. Yeah, so I think he, he's managed to fill that tall frame out nice. How I think I would like to eventually fill a frame out. Yeah, I think it, it is good looking at people like that because you're like, right, look, if someone can do it. At least there's yeah. a chance I can. Like him and Josh training together, they look like freaks. Yeah. Like they make like 70 kilo dumbbells look like pink dumbbells. Yeah. <laughs> Who plays when they all the 20 kg plates? It's like, is that a fucking. Yeah. Is that a five? Yeah. So yeah. Like Swing it around. I know. That's, a, that's eventually where I would like to be. Hmm. Yeah. Like Dave is going to have to be, like, he's taller than you. So he's going to have to be heavier than you in the off season to look as big. Which is it's it's kind of crazy to think like it's it's a long road. Um, oh yeah, you just gotta get you've got to sit tight and just yeah try and enjoy it. Like that, the biggest thing pushing deep into the off season is like taking the focus away from the way you look and that because I, I reckon I'm at the turning point now in this off season where things are getting they aren't as pretty as they were three or four kilos ago. Do you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And they're only gonna get uglier in the next few kilos, but. My, my, my focus now is like training performance, recovery, my ability to eat. Like It's almost like I'm setting them as my goals now versus looking this way and being this lean and having abs. And, do you know what I mean? Like You've got to be able to switch the focus. And how much, right, so say after a prep, because I've never prepped before. Ryan got about like two weeks out and nearly died. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> what was I going to say? Like, at the moment, I feel like Look, I hate food. I have not enjoyed food in such a long time. I've been pushing it for fucking... I, like, I've only done... The only break I've had is, like, a, a, a little six-week mini cut. Like, I haven't done a prep or anything like that. So, like, do you, how, how long after a prep do you, does that, like, novelty have before you go back to fucking hating food again? You know what? I think I'm in the same position as you where my last prep was... Well, it's coming up to two years now. Mm. The, and, and my last prep, I did not do the post-show window well. So I was I was re-dieting again, like, quickly. But I think, like, I've got some clients, I don't know if you've seen them, the twins who competed. Yeah, the board twins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they're, like, eight weeks post-show now. I think they're, like, 20, 25 pounds up. Like, I've seen the pictures you put up today. They look yeah. insane, yeah. Still lean, eating like five and a half thousand calories, but because the push has been quite, it's almost been quick, but they've been using the food because training's been getting better and things like that. They're, they're starving okay. on that level of food. And I, one, I'm thinking, fucking hell, I envy you. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to be eating. Like, they're like, oh, I could just eat more. And you put more in and they get heavier, but body composition just doesn't change. So I think it, it massive that question depends on how you re, how you do the post show window. Like I I fucked it bad. Eight weeks post show, hated every piece of food that, that there was possible to man and, and needed the mini cut. Their eight weeks post show, about to start a good off season, eating loads of food, hungry as anything. So it's it's massively based on how you react post show. Mm, it's funny how like much you actually get turned off food. I was watching um. Do you know Nathan Styles? Yeah, yeah. I was looking at him eating his post workout the other day. I'd say he had about 200 grams of cereal and three bagels with nothing on him. Yeah. And he was just 
breaking them in half and eating like full on half a bagel in one boil. And I was just what the thing was gone in, I'd say five, six minutes, the whole meal. And I, I was watching them, I was like, it, it actually takes me about a half an hour to eat two bagels now. <laughs> I'll be there and just be like, no, yeah. chewing for fucking ages. I just can't wait to, well, to enjoy skinny at heart though. Like I feel like I'm I'm a fat cunt. Like I'm always hungry. I've never lost my appetite ever. See, I'm I think I'm like that because I can always keep eating, but as it gets higher, it's like and, and I will always eat it as well. But it does get to the point where I'm like, oh, I'm not enjoying this. But I could I can keep eating. Like if Cooper increased my food tomorrow, I'd be like, oh crap, yeah. but I'd eat it. And I could keep going no matter what the number is. Yeah, I don't know if that's just sheer idiotic determination or I'm, I'm a fat on the heart. <laughs> I don't know. There's <laughs> food on the plate. I'll, I'll just keep putting it in my mouth and swallowing. But I, like, I don't think I would ever not want a pizza or something. That's the kind of, you know. I thought that until maybe like the last two weeks where I'm like, I, I wouldn't even bother some days. And I think that is, but I, I can get hungry. But to get hungry would mean like time. Like I would need a good few hours or longer without eating. Mm. But then if I did like that, I'm rest day, like faster cardio kind of job. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm too many meals behind. But like Cuba's had to perform the cardio now as well because it's getting to the point where because of my how heavy I am and the training, that I'm I'm starting to flatten out. Like my lower half is flattening out so quick in the week, simply because I mean, we, I probably do maybe like 7K steps a day here, which is probably a bit too much. But it's hard not to when everything's like walking distance. Have to, yeah. Yeah, so because of that, we've taken cardio out and, and I've come back to life a bit this week, which is quite nice. But um, Do you know when you're tracking steps, you have an ordering, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Leave it on or take it off during training? I leave it on. Okay, because I've recently started taking it off because... Just before, like this week is the first week he's brought my food down. My steps, my steps have gone to 10K. But for the last like three or four weeks, I was hitting like 12, 14, like 12, 14-ish K steps. Yeah. I was supposed to be doing eight and it was stressing me out. And I stopped I stopped wearing the ring in training. And then I was like, oh, I'm doing like five, 6,000 in training, which yeah. I don't really get. So I'm like, I was so stressed because I was overshooting my steps every day. I couldn't yeah. go grocery shopping. As in, even if I was to Uber there, I couldn't even walk around the shop because I was doing too many steps. So I, I just had to. When I had an Apple Watch, I used to, I used to take it off, but that was when I was dying. So I think. So you'd get more like purposely. Yeah, kind of thing. So I think I think now, I've only really worn the ring since I was in the offseason, and steps don't overly matter for me now. It's about like, how many can I keep it down to? Like, yeah, it remember. has to be like one to two days a week. He wants me to sit on the sofa like a potato all day, and just not move. And like I find that hard, like you know what I mean. Like it's, 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 you know, I'll get it. I'll get a good few. Yeah, it's it's tough, but yeah, I think it, with that though as well, I guess it's more consistency in it because you kept uh, you kept the ring on and was hitting like twelve to fourteen k. The goal would just match your current output, mm. so you'd set the goal to sixteen k, but you'd have to keep wearing the ring all the time. You yeah, know what I mean. So, but yeah. Taking it off probably just makes it a little bit easier on your head, doesn't it? Yeah, well, off season it did, but now I can't swap it back. Now it's convenient for me. Yeah, it would have been like, yeah, it would have been completely would have undone. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So that's pretty much everything. I, I, that's all the, the questions and stuff wrapped up there. Um, do you have anything else to add, Ryan? No, I'm fairly happy with that. Happy with that. Well, Cam, thank you so much for coming on. It's been an absolute pleasure and some really good information there. I can't wait for, it, for this to go live. Um, and yeah, for, do you want to plug your, your Instagram and your YouTube and that? Yeah, YouTube is just Cameron Mackay. And then Instagram is, I think it's Cam Mackay underscore, I think. I should know that, shouldn't I? Let me check. I should definitely know that. I spend enough fucking time. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's Cam Mackay underscore, yeah. That's cool. it. Right. We'll, we'll, we'll tag it in the, the description anyway as well. Nice one. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Cam. Enjoy the rest of your day out in Dubai. And you yeah, enjoy. Cheers, bro. I'll see you later.